Hello everyone and welcome. Thank you for joining. We're in this video, we're not actually testing anything. Instead, this time around, we're going to take a look at some of the workings behind DPS in more detail, why we use DPS and the unavoidable drawbacks of doing so. It's worth noting though that this will have a lot of numbers and might not be interesting to any viewers who just like to know how different weapons compare for DPS, but it will be applicable to most games where DPS is often considered, not just Destiny 2. So what exactly will I be talking about? First, what is DPS and why is it used? Most will already know this and it will only be short. Secondly, the effects of starting any kind of timer from the moment the first round is fired from a weapon and the anomaly that that causes. Thirdly, showing how DPS is not a static number, which is mostly the result of the previous point, but not entirely, as well as demonstrating that just because a weapon has a higher DPS value than another, doesn't mean it's the better choice. And finally, a quick discussion on how to improve DPS, although this will probably be quite obvious. So, DPS, an acronym for damage per second, and that's exactly what it is. How much damage per second a weapon or combination of weapons and or abilities etc are capable of. The formula is also, quite literally, damage divided by time in seconds. So take a specific amount of damage done and divide it by the time it's taken to do that damage and you then have an averaged DPS value. But why is this used so frequently? Some developers even go as far as to include it as an in-game stat on weapons. Not that I necessarily agree with this, but nonetheless, it is built into some titles. Now, it's used because the performance of a weapon can't be accurately judged by looking at damage values alone, whether that be damage per round or total damage for every round you can hold in reserves, etc. For a quick example, let's say weapon A does 5,000 damage per round, can hold a maximum of 10 rounds, making total damage 50,000, and takes 10 seconds to fire all of those. Weapon B does 4,000 damage per round, can also hold a maximum of 10, meaning total damage for the latter is 40,000, but it only takes 7.5 seconds to fire all of those rounds. Using only damaged numbers, Weapon A would be the better choice in any scenario, but of course, that isn't true. It might have higher total damage, but if there are only 7.5 seconds or less to do that damage, Weapon B will more than likely be the better choice. And that's because it does 5,333 damage per second as opposed to Weapon A, which averages 5,000 damage per second. DPS effectively demonstrates the rate at which a weapon can do damage, which is more important when gauging performance than just using a static number. This principle surrounds us in modern day life. A reasonably good comparison is using that of an internal combustion engine. The most common unit to try and quantify an engine's performance is using brake horsepower, or BHP. But an engine doesn't actually produce power at all, technically. All it produces is torque, at least at the crankshaft. Yet we can't quantify an engine's performance very well using torque alone, which is just a measurable force just like we can't measure a weapon's performance very well when using damage alone. We need to know the rate at which torque is produced, which is where the revolutions per minute, or RPM, of an engine comes into play. Notice there's now, again, a unit of time introduced. With a simple formula and the correct units, we can calculate BHP at any given RPM, which is more useful than torque alone, as it's now the rate of torque delivery, also known as work or maybe work done. This is similar in principle to damage in DPS. Damage alone isn't enough, so we introduce a unit of time to determine the rate of damage, or work, which for us is damage per second. Now that you know why DPS is used, if you didn't already, let's take a look at the anomaly that occurs when timing from the moment the first round is fired, and is something I've briefly mentioned in previous videos. So, the longer a weapon is firing for, whether that be for a single magazine or for multiple magazines with reloads in between each, the calculated DPS number tends to fall off and reduce the longer the time tested goes on for. Of course, the weapon isn't doing less damage and nor is it firing slower, but the final DPS figure will typically be lower the longer the time is tested over. This is just a mathematical anomaly when calculating DPS 
And it's all because the first round fired, assuming it does damage instantly, which most weapons in Destiny 2 do, is effectively infinite DPS and free. This first round, or magazine, artificially raises the calculated average DPS value, but the longer you test the weapon for, the less of an effect it has, causing the final number to gradually reduce. Remember, DPS is just an averaged amount of damage a weapon can do per second over a fixed period of time. It's not what a weapon will do every second. Let me demonstrate this in a table using Whisper of the Worm, as that doesn't require any reloads if landing crits, and then I'll show the same effect on a graph. This particular sniper does 40,929 damage per round and has a claimed fire rate of 72 RPM. This means that between every round, there is a 0.83 second delay, which is derived by dividing 60, the number of seconds in a minute, by 72, the number of rounds that can be fired in a minute. So the clock starts when the first round is fired. So that's 40,929 damage, but zero time. So effectively infinite DPS. When the second round is fired, damage is now 81,858 and time 0.83. So DPS has dropped from a mathematical infinite to 98,230. As the third round is fired, damage climbs to 122,787, while the time to fire three is now 1.67 seconds, meaning DPS has fallen even further to 73,672. And this just keeps on falling the longer you fire for, but the difference between each round becomes less and less as you go on and you will eventually reach an almost exactly true DPS value, but you would need to test this over an extremely long period of time to see that. This is because, as I've said, DPS is just an average amount of damage per second that's artificially increased due to the first round fired, the longer you test and the less of an effect that opening round has on the numbers. This is clear from the table on screen where I've gone up to 10 rounds and the calculated DPS after each one fired. Don't worry though, this doesn't mean firing one round at a boss is better than 10. I'm just trying to demonstrate why DPS numbers appear to drop the longer you test for. It's just a mathematical thing because DPS is an average. You're not actually going to do less damage per second in game. So now to look at the same weapon with the same numbers on the graph. For one round, you can see it's vertical. And now for two, it's, well, far from vertical. As I put more on the graph, so three rounds, four rounds, five, and now the rest, the effect can be visualized very easily. Just to clarify, I am in no way whatsoever fudging the numbers to create this. Feel free to use the table previously on screen and make the same graph for yourself, as everything you need is on that. If you do it correctly, you'll come to the same conclusion. There is, however, a way I could stop this happening, at least on the graphs and that is to show every individual round fired as a vertical line. I do this with rocket launchers, as shown on screen now from my last video covering those, but look at how hard it can be to follow each individual weapon when we're firing just seven to nine rounds. Could you imagine this with a sniper, for example, that can fire around 20 rounds in total, even more with something like four times the charm? It's just not feasible, and to be honest, if the same, admittedly very small effect is present on every weapon when it's firing, it matters even less. This is just to help visualize the anomaly of the first round effectively being free, which I've now been talking about for way too long. So what about the first magazine? Well, yes, that also artificially raises the average DPS value and is less pronounced the longer the time tested. And it's for the exact same reason in principle. Think about it. The first magazine has no reload before it, whereas every other one does. Compare it to the Whisper of the Worm example I've just given, where the first round happens without delay, but then there's a 0.83 second delay before every other round. This is the same. The first magazine has no reload delay, but every magazine after that has a reload delay before it, with downtime being anything from a second to four or five seconds, depending on the weapon and the build, etc. A quick table is coming onto screen now demonstrating this. It's not any particular weapon from Destiny, I've just used some basic numbers, all of them at the top for transparency. 
Every round does the same damage. Every magazine has the same number of rounds, fire rate is consistent and reload time doesn't change. Yet the calculated DPS number drops over time. Now I can't actually show this on the graph as thankfully all the lines would sit on top of each other. And that's because every magazine is separated by a reload. Remember when I said if I separated every individual round fired by the delay in between each due to the RPM, we wouldn't have the first anomaly on the graph? Well, that's why we don't see this anomaly for magazines, because they're always separated by the delay when reloading. Anyway, I've definitely spent far too long talking about that one, so let's quickly look at another reason why DPS isn't a static number, and with one value on its own, it can be misleading. This is much easier to explain and shouldn't take as long. Coming onto screen now are two weapons on a graph from my Season 11 summary video. The numbers are irrelevant now, so don't compare these to anything from the current season. The red line is the grenade launcher Berenger's Memory, using Demolitionist to reload twice, followed by Pulse Monitor. Again, this wouldn't be possible anymore due to the nerf to Demolitionist, but I can still use these two to explain the point. Now the orange line is Interference 6 paired with Wither Horde. So, Berenger's memory actually did 35,471 DPS, while Interference 6 and Wither Horde did 35,249 DPS. But this number is simply calculated by taking the total damage done at the end and dividing it by the time to do that damage. So at these two points here, meaning they're just averages over that fixed period of time, and they're different for both weapons. If I was to show nothing but these two numbers, you'd think they were about the same, maybe Berenger's memory a slightly better choice. But firstly, look at where Interference 6 and Wither Horde are at the moment Berenger's memory ends. They've actually done close to 400,000 damage, compared to the single grenade launcher, which finishes up around 350,000. So at that point, Interference 6 has a DPS average in the region of 40,000, which is much better. This is a perfect example of how we can't realistically compare the calculated average DPS of any weapon using just a single number, and it's also why the graphs are, in my opinion, extremely useful. Second to that, and this supports my point that DPS numbers are just an average amount of damage per second and not what a weapon would literally do every second, I'm going to show the DPS for both of these at the end of each magazine. I've also included the DPS of Interference 6 at the point where you first switch from Wither Horde to the Grenade Launcher. And as you can see, there's quite the variation. Berenger's memory gradually dropping off over time, which is due to the point discussed in the previous chapter of the video, where the first magazine artificially increases the average DPS, while Interference 6 actually starts low due to the time it takes to fire two rounds from Wither Horde, pulls it back and manages to peak at over 40,000 DPS and then drops back down due to the time it takes to fire the second pair of rounds from Wither Horde. It's due to reasons like this that I make the graphs in my videos, because you can visualise what's happening at any given point. Providing nothing but a single DPS number just doesn't do that. This is also why I don't agree with DPS being an in-game stat, without any further information. Is the DPS number provided by a developer for a single full magazine? Is it for half a magazine? Or is it for two magazines, maybe even three? Without knowing that second part of information, or even knowing over what time period it does DPS, it can be hard to judge. Admittedly though, when you lack the same important information for every weapon, you can at least compare them with each other. So, sustained DPS versus burst DPS. Well, as the name suggests, one is how much damage can be done in a short period of time over a single magazine, for example, while the other is how much damage can be done over a longer period of time. I've left the same graph on screen as these two examples are polar opposites. Berenger's memory is clearly better for burst DPS, which is what you would typically want for champions, while Interference 6 and Wither Horde are better for sustained DPS, evidently, so more suitable for bosses with longer damage phases. But by just looking at the single DPS number for these weapons, you wouldn't know that. It's the graph that allows you to visualise what is more suitable for you for a specific situation and allow you to make a decision accordingly. A number on its own doesn't allow this. There isn't much to discuss really regarding burst and sustained DPS, they're quite self-explanatory. It's up to you to decide what will be better for you depending on what you're going to play. So 
enough of that now. What can you do to increase the EPS? This is actually quite easy. Increase the amount of damage you can do in a set period of time. Do a set amount of damage in less time or a combination of the two. Specific to Destiny 2, when trying to do any of this, you have weapon perks, weapon mods, armor mods, and exotic armor perks, etc. As well as pairing up two or more weapons. Example of all this would be a perk such as Vorpal Weapon. It doesn't affect a weapon in any way other than allowing it to do more damage against mages and bosses. So more damage in potentially the same amount of time as the same weapon without it. A perk like Rapid Hit will speed up reload if you keep landing precision hits, so no more damage than the same weapon without the perk, but less downtime as reloads are faster. Something like Frenzy actually does a combination of both when prop. A boss spec mod will increase damage, while a backup mag mod will increase the magazine size and can even result in one less reload when firing all rounds. One does more damage, while the other one can reduce downtime. Armor loader mods can be used to increase reload speed, again reducing that downtime. Exotic armor like the Titan's Actium War Rigs will reduce the number of reloads when using a machine gun and in some cases, such as with Xenophage, remove the need to reload at all when firing every round in reserves. And finally, pairing weapons together, with two of the most potent combinations being Anarchy with a slug shotgun and Izanagi's Burden paired with a grenade launcher or a rocket launcher, just as examples. So that's pretty much all I wanted to talk about, without going into too much detail even further or droning on any more than I already have. Not necessarily something that will help in game, but hopefully the viewers that like numbers found it interesting. I plan to make a video that covers weapon balance in PvE at some point, but it's likely this will be the last you'll see from me before the new season. So on that note, it is actually then all from me. I hope those of you that made it this far enjoyed the video. If you did, don't forget to like and subscribe if you're not already. And as always, thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time.